In this video, we're going to look at Audit D, uh, not installed by default. So you're going to want to run apt install Audit D. Pause the video, make that happen. Now, in this case, I'm on Amazon Web Services. It doesn't matter for this lesson. You can be on a virtual machine. You can be on vCenter, VirtualBox, VMware, whatever. Um, I happen to be running Ubuntu 20.04. Just demonstrate that with a cat Etsy issue. You can see there's Ubuntu 20.04. Again, any version of Ubuntu that's uh, within the last four years or so should be fine for this. So Etsy audit is the first directory we need to be aware of with audit D. You can see I've got an audit D.conf. I've got an audit rules. Let's take a look at audit D.conf first. So we've got our audit.conf. If I can type, there we go. Basic configuration parameters. Our log files at var log audit.log. And uh, we could configure this with something like our syslog to ship our logs off to a syslog server or some other location. Right now, everything is being logged locally to the default location. I'm going to use control Z just to verify that. Control Z is in Zulu to background Pico here. And I'm just going to cat that file, var log audit, audit.log. You can see just by installing audit D, we have uh, already started logging information. And I've done some work with it before this tutorial. I did a couple of things. You can see here that we have a type equals config change. This first line here, type equals, is key to sort of reading your audit log and knowing what's going on. This is a config change to... Um, Audit D, and you can see I changed it to audit enabled equals zero. So my audit D is not running. And I did that because I want to show you how to determine whether or not audit D is actually running. We'll do that in a minute. So I'm going to hit FG to foreground into that process because I just hit control Z a second ago to background it. Being aware of this configuration file is a good thing uh, and knowing what the defaults are and just having a point of reference here. We can see when the disk is full, we have a suspend action. If the disk fills up, probably a good idea to suspend. Disk error action is suspend as well. So I'm going to hit control X to exit. We also have our rules file here. So we have our audit.rules and this is the file that's going to have the master rules that audit D will start with. If I cat audit.rules here, we can see that we have hyphen D, hyphen B for the buffer size of 8 gigabytes, hyphen F for our fail condition, backlog wait time. Our first one here, hyphen D, deletes all rules when um, audit D is started. So everything gets wiped out, and then these rules are then pushed into audit D one at a time. So by looking at your Audit D rules, you can see exactly what Audit D is doing when you restart it. it. May not necessarily be what it's doing right now, but these are the rules that are implemented on start. Now you'll see it's automatically generated from Audit uh, Rules.D, which means we probably don't want to mess with this file. And just like many files on Linux, uh, there'll be a configuration directory that ends in .d that contains configuration files that you should edit that a lot of times will be uh, sort of concatenated into some other configuration file like we have this one up here. And inside of rules.d we have audit rules and it's essentially the same thing. So this audit.rules file in rules.d is being used to generate the audit rules files in Etsy audit. Same thing. All right, so the first command you'll want to run if you're in, for example, the Cyber Patriot competition is audit CTL hyphen S. This is going to give us the status. It's going to tell us our basic what's going on with audit D now. And we can see the first thing I see is enabled is set to zero. So that enabled flag can have three things. Can have zero, which is auditing is off. Can have one, which is auditing is on or it can have two, which is auditing is on, but you can't make any changes until the computer is actually rebooted. So right now we are not logging because enabled is set to zero. 
and I can use audit CTL hyphen E one to change that enabled flag to one and using the man command or doing a Google for audit CTL and uh, some of the commands that we use here are going to be important because this is a complicated kind of subsystem, right? There are a lot of flags and a lot of ways you can create rules in search. We're just going to look at some basic ones for this tutorial. So there's my audit uh, CTL hyphen E1 and it's going to spit back to me that, okay, auditing is now enabled. We have a PID of 2291. Let's verify that. I can do a PS hyphen AX and I'll grep this time. I'll take all of the output from PSAX and we'll grep for 2291. And this is going to take all of our processes that are outputted by this command and it's going to look for a string of 2291. It's going to tell us if that exists and it does. We can see that we have a grep command that has that string because we just ran it. We plugged it in there. But we also have audit D, which is running under this process ID of 2291 as well. So that's all good information there. All right, let's create a rule. You may be in a situation where you want to monitor a file specifically. So let's look at file monitoring first. And I'll go to the Etsy um, folder here. And uh, we've got our Etsy password file in uh, Etsy, which is, of course, one of the common ones you want to pay attention to. And of course, we need to know exactly how this is structured. Um, we want to monitor whether or not, let's say, anyone reads this file, writes to this file. Uh, we could do execute on it, I suppose. Um, let's monitor for all permissions on this file. Anything happens with Etsy password, I want Audit D to tell me about it. So again, we're going to use our Audit ctl command and we're going to pass it hyphen w this time and here's our man page on google uh, that i just did a google for for audit ctl and we can see uh, hyphen w will take a path now that path could be um, a folder or a file but it stands for watch so we're going to add a watch here to a file and we're going to watch etsy password and then we're going to use hyphen P just to demonstrate here. And here's hyphen P in the man file. We're going to describe permission access type. And we can do read, write, execute, or attribute change. I said A was append a second ago. It's attribute change. Uh, so we'll be monitoring to see if anybody changes those key file attributes as well. So let's go ahead and add all of those. That'd be R, W, R, X, and A. And then we're going to use hyphen key, uh, K, which is a keyword. Now this is every time a log is generated, it'll print whatever text that I put here, which will allow me to have some unique um, values that I can search for later on, making this a little easier to find. And I'll go ahead and I'll do Beck underscore P A S S W D. Anytime that appears in my logs, I want to be able to search for it. Awesome. Okay, so now we're all set up. Before we do anything to Etsy password, though, let's do an AU search, which is one way we can search through our audit logs. Let's search for the file Etsy password. We can see there are no matches. So let's do an AU search for the keyword of Beck underscore password. We can see we already have something here, even though I haven't done anything to Etsy password, right? And that's because this isn't um, a change that was made to the file. This is of type config change. And we can see that we have a key here of Etsy password that was um, created when we went in and we modified the running rule set inside of Audit D. So that um, was the fact that we just ran this right here is audited by default. Okay, so now let's cat Etsy password. And let's do a read operation on that file. Now let's check our audit log with AU search. We can see that we are turning up quite a bit more. So let's break this down a little bit. We can see here that we have a type of syscall 
And uh, this syscall means something happened. There was a system call, and we can see that it was uh, type 257. We're going to look at that in a second. We can see the command that was run was the cat command. And it was run with this cat command, the cat command that was found at user bin cat. And again, here's that special key of Beck password. We can see that the user who did this was with the user ID 0. And so we could look at our Etsy password file and determine, you know, who's the user. We could use our, um, it is the get, it's the get ent command, and I highly recommend you look into this one. Um, there are certain entities that are listed that you can get, and I can get ent password, and I can look for the user ID zero. And uh, we can see that because this user ID of zero is the one who did this, we can see that this was executed by root. So we're digging a lot out here, right? Um, we can see that this type syscall that shows up in audit D has a syscall number of 257. And so with x64 architecture, later on, if you're in my course, we'll look at assembly language. Uh, here's a Linux system call table. And uh, we have things like system read, system open, um, which would open a file. You would think it would be a syscall of two. But because we used cat, I think it's different here. Um, I'm going to search for 257, and you can see this is a system open at call, which will return a file descriptor as well. And so we can see what our system call number was and exactly what was happening there. All right, so now we're monitoring Etsy password. That's a good thing. And, you know, we could go through and we could monitor the entire Etsy directory um, just like this. Instead of doing Etsy password, we could just monitor Etsy and we could look for everything in Etsy. Now, that's going to be a pretty noisy audit log if we were to have that in there. Okay, so let's look at one more thing here. If I go to audit... Um, and I go to rules.d and I cat my audit rules, you'll see that this um, command here, this uh, hyphen W, let me go ahead and get back to it here. Um, it, this hyphen W Etsy password is not currently a part of the rules um, that would be implemented on start because when Audit D starts, it's going to delete everything and it's going to run these rules. So to make them persistent, we have to add to this file. So I'm going to pico rules.d, excuse me, audit.rules. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add this rule. I'll just highlight it here like this and I'll do a copy which inside of putty is a little strange, I know. And we'll add that rule there like that. So now this rule will be a part of our audit rules on startup. And let me demonstrate that. So if I cat, if I CD down here, and I cat our audit rules here that are compiled from rules.d, you can see it's not there. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run a system CTL restart audit D and if I cat my audit rules now you can see that after restart that rule has been added and will now be present every time so one of the things you might want to look for if uh, someone who is malicious gets into your system you know they might add something like this they might come here and they might add um, at the very top hyphen E zero. That would turn off auditing every time you try to start it. So you'd want to either change it to a one or you'd want to eliminate that. Okay, so if you've come that far, awesome. Uh, we'll look at uh, different ways we can use Audit D in the next series of videos. Thank you for your time.